sarili nyo dahil 2029! Bagong taon, bagong kaalaman at bagong talakayan na naman ang iyahatid namin sa inyo. New Year, New Learning. Tama ka dyan, Gab. At ngayong gabi tayo ay pumunta dito sa Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts Senior High School. Woo! And just like every year, kaya naman break time muna tayo sa mga lessons sa skolahan at ating pag-usapan ng mga issue ng bayan. Lahat ng iyan, dito lamang sa inyong coolest classroom ng bayan. Kaya siguro duwing walang absent dito lang sa School para sa plan ng papapatayo ng senior high school dito sa Quezon City. And so Magna Anima along with their private sector partners started, operated, and transferred the DepEd Quezon City Senior High School, the track, Arts and Design for Media Arts dito sa Quezon City High School. Mayor Herbert Bautista, Superintendent Elizabeth Casada, and Father Carmelo Kaluwag signed the MOA for this partnership on August 19, 2015. Nagumpisa ang klases noong June 6, 2016 with only one room and 31 students bilang unang section ng ELJ SHS. After the sponsored advertisements and the active social media campaigns, tumaas ang mga estudyante sa ELJ from 31 students to 166 students. This also paved the way to the creation of other sections. In February 5 of 2018, by the Ordinance Number 2653, the local school board recommended that the senior high school at Barangay Sacred Heart, Quezon City, be renamed as Eugenio M. Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts. ELJ SHS enjoys high status in academics and extracurricular activities which earn it to an outstanding reputation. Numerous trophies and awards validate its high performance standards in the classroom. Numerous clubs and organizations were also established in ELJ within three years. Clubs such as the Schools to Student Council, the Comelec, the Media Tones, the journalism clubs such as Haraya and Vanguard, the Eugenia Debate Society, Apollo, E-Crew, and many more. All of the students of ELJ CMA FHS are encouraged to take advantage of all opportunities for them to participate, learn, and grow. Kaya naman ang tanong ngayon, handa na ba kayo sa hamon ng ating debate? Oo naman, Ate Trisha. Hindi, hindi. Papatalo ang mga Eugenians. Ready na ready na kami para sa mga kakakulit na diskusyon. At ang lahat ng yan ay dito lang sa... School Day! Nandito pa rin tayo sa Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts Senior High School. At syempre, excited tayong lahat! Yes! Syempre dahil New Year, bago na naman ang magiging topic natin ngayong gabi. Kinakita mo naman, excited na excited na sila. That's true. Kaya wag na natin patagalin pa. Ano po ba ang pag-uusapan natin? Panoorin po natin ito. Schoolmates, dapat nga bang magkaroon ng regulasyon sa mga state-funded arts? State-funded arts ang tawag sa anumang obrang likha na pinondohan ng pamahalaan. Dito sa Pilipinas, ang National Commission for Culture and Arts o NCCA ang punong abala sa lahat ng bagay na may kinalaman sa arts and culture. At para matugunan ang lahat ng mga activities, projects and programs na under ng NCCA, isang pondo ang naka-allocate dito na kung tawagin ay NEFCA o National Endowment Fund for Culture and the Arts. Pero ikinababahala ng nakararami na kung tuluyang popondohan na nga ang mga gagawing obra, Tila malilimitahan daw ang freedom of expression ng mga artist at baka maging daan pa nga raw ito upang maging propaganda sa gobyerno. E kayo mga schoolmates, pabor ba sa pagbibigay regulasyon sa mga state-funded art? Schoolmates, 
dapat nga ba ang regulasyon ng state-funded arts? Ang National Commission for Culture and the Arts ay ang official government agency na siyang nagpapanukala ng preservation, promotion, and development of culture and the arts dito sa Pilipinas. At para sa implementasyon ng kanilang mga proyekto at pagtatanghal, ay binibigyan sila ng isang exclusive fund na tinatawag nating National Endowment Fund for Culture and the Arts o ang tinatawag na NEFCA. Well, that's right, Tresha. No? Pero necessary kasi ang pagpa-fund ng government sa iba't ibang mga forms ng art para mas mag-flourish yung art at saka syempre makarating sa mga tao. Pero meron kasi mga ilang nagsasabi na nagiging threat itong pagpa-fund ng government dahil nalilimitahan daw ang freedom of expression ng ating mga artist. So yan yung pag-uusapan natin. Very interesting. So huwag na nating patagalin pa. Sino-sino po ba ang mga makakasama natin sa ating debate para sa ating unang grupo na nininiwalang dapat ang regulasyon ng mga state-funded arts. Sila ay sila Daniel, Vernice at Andrea. There are already allocated funds for the art given by the government. And does this inflict conflict? No. Because it, those regulations are implemented not to limit the artist's creativity and the artist's talent. Those regulations are implemented because the government only wants the artist to give a more disciplined, a more organized type of art. And we have a lot of government-funded institutions that caters be it indigenous arts, modern arts, for our local artists. We have the CCP, the National Museum, the public libraries, and the public exhibits. Because that doesn't only give a massive and big impact towards our society. Hence, it also gives us a sense of individuality and sense of who we really are as a Filipinos. And for its cultural impacts, those won't really limit or those won't affect the artist because in this way, it will just be a repository for the society's memory that can give like a much more stronger evidence as to how diverse and, so, and, and as to how strong our culture is. And with all these reasons, I am very proud to propose. At ang atin ng mga ikalawang grupo ay naniniwalang hindi dapat ang regulasyon ng state-funded arts. Sila ay sina Angelica, Matthew, and Rolando. Regulation means limiting arts. And limiting arts means you are actually taking away the true essence of art. If not the state, how are we going to fund these arts? Two private companies and non governmental organizations or NGOs. It will all be sustainable for the artists as well because they will benefit it and there will not be limitation of how they are going to produce art and it will not take the true essence of their art. So, in the opposition side, we firmly believe that to private companies, it will not take the essence, but it will also benefit the state as well. How so? Because of our, let us look into the and economy of the Philippines. We all know that there are many people below the poverty line who are living with just 50 pesos a day for a, who cannot even afford a single meal. And with that, if the private companies and the non-government non organizations, it will not be a burden to the state that these arts will not be, will be neglected because there are someone to provide for them. And if there are someone to provide for them, it will not take the essence. It will be beneficial for our economy because it can provide a good living, a sustainable living for the people. At the end of the day, it will be a win-win for the state, for the people, and for the artists as well. And with all those reasons, I am very proud to oppose. Wow! Simula pa lang yan, guys. Pero mukhang magiging maganda ang talakay natin ngayong gabi. Pero schoolmates, hindi lang ang mga debaters natin ang pwedeng makialam sa usapin natin ngayong gabi dahil kasama pa rin natin ang mga schoolmates natin dito sa Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts Senior High School! Kaya yeah, guys, sobra excited ko. Maya-maya lang. Hihingan din natin sila ng kanika nilang mga opinion at katanungan at sa mga schoolmates man natin sa kanika nilang mga bahay. Pwede rin kayong magpadala ng inyong mga komento at opinion. Ipadala lamang sa aming mga social media sites. At schoolmates, maya maya lang ilan sa inyong mga pinadala ay aming babasahin. Sa aming pagbabalik, simula na naman ang isang mainitang diskusyon. Dito lang yan sa Schoolmates! Nagbabalik 
ang schoolmates. Guys, kanina napakinggan na natin ang opening statement sa magkabilang grupo mula sa kanilang mga team leaders. Ngayon naman, pakinggan natin ano pa ba ang masasabi ng kanilang mga team members. Yes, yeah, sure. First, simulan natin yan kay Vernice. Go ahead. We believe that in this bench, we are not really regulating the art itself, but we are regulating the process of making the art itself. There should be order. Uh, for example, may binigay na funds ang gobyerno para sa isang project, and we want na yung funds na yun, maayos siyang mailatag at mas maayos siyang ma-distribute sa different types of arts. For example, merong... Uh, Meron for the dance and for the music. You mentioned about handing this responsibility to the private companies and the NGOs. We believe that in this bench, that will be problematic. Why? Because this, this will introduce us to capitalism and exploitation of the artist's works. We can see from our arguments that it is the government that protects the artists better. Maraming salamat, Bernice. Palakpakan natin sa... Dalawang puntos yung in-erase ni Vernice Trisha. Una is sinabi niya yung pagre-regulate daw ng mga state-funded arts ay hindi yung arts mismo, hindi yung project mismo, but yung uh, distribute, yung yung streamline ng process paano makarating dun sa art. So, hindi naman daw talaga yung art. Pangalawang point na sinabi niya that I'd like to make sense uh, dun sa sinabi niya at ang mga projects daw pag napunta sa mga uh, private ins institutions, nako-commercialize. Ibig sabihin, imbis na makarating sa mga tao, na makarating sa masa, is tumataas. Kasi kailangan daw magbayad, na-exploit, etc. So ngayon, pakinggan natin kung ano bang argument ni Matthew. So right now, the government has many programs that that help Filipino society, like welfare and other stuff. It, and also that includes art programs. So, but right now, but right now, in the status quo, the government can have problems in funding both programs. So, so, so if we were to cut funding or redirect funding from from art programs to other programs in Filipino society, that can help. That can help. Both, that can help Filipino society and and its economy in the future. So, so in the future, if 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 those redirected funds from art programs can help boost the economic output of, the, of, the, of Filipino society, we can we can then. We can now use those funds, funds gained from from the from the economic boost to further bolster the to further bolster the arts production of the Philippine government. Also, number two is that can provide a conflict of interest within within within, uh, within artists that that are government funded. Say say an artist that's government funded creates art that is potentially black propaganda towards the government. So what would the government say? Would they cut funding or no? So so in our bench, we are offering a backup a backup plan for the artist. So so that's why we are we are we are proposing that private companies and NGOs will 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 fund will fund artists that are that will not be directly supported by the government due to conflicts of interest. And and for all those reasons we are very proud to oppose. Thank you. Oh medyo ano ah medyo mabibigat yung mga bining, uh, binanggit niyang rason pero i think um in a uh, in a student's point of view this is considered to be valid um sinabi niya sky kanina na um pwedeng ibigay natin ang responsibilidad ng pag-fund ng uh, state ng state art sa mga NGOs or for example sa mga private companies because um it is better to bolster the um, economic uh, status of the Philippines at the moment using the government fund. So, I think this can be further elaborated, like better, mamaya. So, ano nga ba naman ang masasabi mo dito, Andrea? So, here in, the gov here in the government side, what we are trying to say here is that these regulations are not really created to limit like the entire um, concept of art of itself, but rather the process of like um, distributing it here. So, here in the opposition side, they are missing and like, uh, like overlooking the idea that art can also be like a source of a, uh, of a good uh, economic advancement here in the Philippines, like art being a form of tourism and advertisement as well. So why is it the opposition arguing that the, we have to give the responsibilities to the private companies like, when it, in fact it's the government's responsibility to like support these arts and also by means of that it's also um, another way of like supporting the people, right? So here because it's a, another... Um, by simply supporting, like funding these arts, it's another way of full, uh, government fulfilling their mission to promote education, um, to protect the culture and identity of the Filipinos, and also like to value our um, history of itself, right? Like the entire um, this entire process is not just like a minor movement that the government can do, but it could also lead to like a general um, benefit to the entire Filipino nation. Because at the end of the day, we are all artists here, like part of the Philippine nation, and everything that we that we do here. 
here is for like for the sake of the arts and para sa bayan. That's all. As sinasabi ni Andrea, guys, ay binuksan niya ano ba yung magiging epekto o benefit ng mga arts na to. Nasabi niya, advertisement, tourism, which are all valid na magandang punto ng pag-usapan. Ano ba ang uh, gusto natin mangyari sa mga arts na to? Ano bang epekto na gusto natin makuha mula sa mga arts na to? Is it profit? Is it, uh, is it for people to think uh, critically pag nakita yung mga arts na to? So, magandang pag-usapan yan mamaya at ma-elaborate natin yan mamaya. Pero Rolando, ngayon gusto kong marinig ano ang masasabi mo. How would you allow black propaganda to happen for artists who are regulated by state-funded art? Now, going back, now going to my point, um, to what I am trying, to, to, what, to what I am about to say, um, what we want to, what we want to have is a model that would create a sustainable life for artists and for the government itself. Because in the status quo we have right here in the Philippines, the government prioritizing projects that boosts our economy, that, that boosts our living, so on and so forth. And if the government would not regularize state-funded art, this would pave the way for it to succeed and for artists to create more and to create freely and to create, uh, and to create more artworks that aren't attached to the government itself. Thank you. Actually, Sky, may mga narinig tayo kanina ng mga um, uh, mabibigat na words. Maganda pang i-elaborate. Oh, maganda pang i-elaborate. Pero um, uh, I think the main point here is that does regulation mean um, we have to omit certain parts of the art? Does it have to be um, regulated in such a way that we change the content of the art? Pero um, it is valid. It's a good question. And uh, I think marami pang masasabi dito yung mga schoolmates natin. Siyempre, kasama rin yung ating mga netizens. Dahil unang parte pa lamang yan ng ating talakayan, marami pa tayong pag-uusapan. Ngayon naman, malalaman natin kung ano nga ba ang pulso ng ating mga netizens na ihahatid sa atin ng ating schoolmate na si Yeah. Ayan. Sky Trisha, maraming maraming salamat. Siyempre, hindi lang ang mga schoolmates natin dito sa Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts, Senior High School ang merong opinion kung dapat nga ba ang regulasyon sa state-funded arts. Pati na rin ang ating mga netizens ay nagpadala ng kanikanilang mga opinion. Ito, isa sa ating netizens ang nagpadala si Joaquin Soldao sa ating Facebook account. Sabi niya, hindi dapat. There's a thing called regulation. If you censor too much of something, it would lose its essence of art. Ayan, Joaquin, maraming maraming salamat sa ating mga netizens. Patuloy lang kayo magpadala ng inyong mga opinion at inyong mga katanungan. At syempre, maya maya lamang, pwede rin kayong magpahayag ng inyong opinion sa pamamagitan ng pagboto kung saan kayo papanig sa ating topic for tonight. Bukod dyan, schoolmates, mamaya meron tayong pipiliing best speaker. Siya ay pipiliin na ating mga schoolmates dito sa Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts. Senior High School at syempre natin mga schoolmates na. At ang criteria for ating judging ay inyong makikita sa inyong mga screens ngayon. There you go! Yep. At sa aming pagbabalik ay magpapatuloy pa ang mainitang diskusyon dito lang sa... Schoolmates! Welcome back, schoolmates! Trisha, mas painitin natin ang nangyayari nating debate. Mas magpapawis na yung katawan yes. ko dito. Dahil tayo ay dadako sa ating free flow discussion kung saan tayo ay magbibitaw lamang ng mga katanungan sa ating mga debaters at hayaan natin silang sumagot at magsagutan. At syempre, just like any other episode, pinaalalahan na yung mga debaters natin and of course, our audience, na ang ating programa ay hindi nagdidikta kung ano ang tama or mali. Bagkos, pinapalawig lamang natin kung ano yung kaalaman ng mga kabataan regarding sa ating social issues. That's right. So, ano ba ang ating first question? Posible bang magkaroon ng mga restrictions in terms of types of art and art expression kung magiging government-funded ang mga arts. Meron kasi possibility na pag, pag government funded, of course, meron ding interest and then ang government doon sa artists and doon sa arts. So, so say namin, so, so doon sa isang punto namin kanina na sinabi namin, what if kung may isang artist na currently fina-fund ng government na biglang nagagawa sila lang ng project na hindi isang ayon sa, sa interest ng state, hindi hindi sumasang ayon sa government or say, or even say, nagpro-protesta. So, 
So, may possibility na magkakaroon ng conflict of interest ang government. So, so hindi natin magagaranti na meron tayong freedom of expression and, and pamimintay natin, hindi, natin, hindi rin natin magagaranti ang essence of art kung may conflict of interest ang nagpa-fund ng, ang nagpa-fund ng mga arts na yun. Thank you. So you see, the conflict of interest is not really exclusive to the government side, but rather also to the private companies as per your counter-proposal, right? Because yeah. we see, like, this conflict of interest doesn't really exist in the government. Because also, if, for example, given in your like counter solution that the private companies would fund the art, right? That could also be another way of like creating a conflict of interest when it comes to the artist and the like um the company that would be funding the art, so, right? Because we're saying here is that there would there there would always become like the bias when it comes to creating of art. But I rather agree, in the government, we we uh, we concede to the fact that yes, there would always be a conflict of interest. But rather here in the government, we wanted the state. We're giving the responsibility of the state because it's their really responsibility and it's less problematic than the private companies. So of course, yeah, we also consider that fact na of, of course, lahat, lahat ng organizations, private, public, meron namang ano, meron ding inherent na bias. Pero, pero we, have, we have this third option then we, we, which we provided in our point. So, meron, meron kaming ano, isa, isa pang option which is the NGO. And NGOs typically, hindi sila profit driven or hindi rin sila like driven ng isang interest lang. Of course, meron silang ideas na pina fight for pero there are many NGOs in the Philippines that can provide support to artists. So, it's not just one NGO. So, so the artists can have multiple choices of NGOs that they believe they that 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 they're going to have a support. So yun, makakapili sila makakapili mga artists na na mga NGO na susuportahan sila. So hindi lang mga private companies, mayroon sila mga options din. How can you say that the artists can guarantee their art to those non-government organizations? Paano sila magkaroon ng incentive if those NGOs are not expecting anything in return? So you can't really say that they have a lot of choices Oh, their NGOs who are willing to fund. But the question here is, bakit there are no there are no such thing as those NGOs can guarantee the artist art and its essence for itself. But is art about incentives? I think not. Kasi naniniwala, ka, naniniwala kami sa opposition side na it's most likely about the essence and the true purpose of art na nakalay doon sa artist. Didn't we, you guys, argue about the economic value of the arts? Kasi you, we were talking about the essence of art being, being like the responsibility of the government to promote education and the culture and the, like, the history. So, then you guys suddenly started talking about the art being an economic All value right. of the country, Wait, right? Wait, Andrea, putulin ko muna. I want to jump tayo. From, gusto ko muna pag-usapan nyo yung propaganda kasi nag-jump kayo to the economic value. Uh -huh. So, Hulihin natin mga economic value. Balikan natin yung propaganda or the purpose of these arts. So gusto kong tanong, uh, itanong sa inyo pabalik, maapektuhan ba yung arts? Kasi syempre merong intention yung mga arts niyan before yan ipasok. So maapektuhan ba yan? Magagamit ba yan ng, ng gobyerno as black propaganda? Of course, we are going to tie back in our first argument na the government has, in the government has interest and the government has specific agendas to fulfill. So, so of course, naturally, when, when, you, when, the government, when, when the government funds artists, they can be limited to what, what they can and can't say. So, so, so potentially, the government can use the artists that they fund for propaganda towards themselves and prevent those artists that are, that, that, that are probably against the government from speaking out against, against the government itself. So Matthew, sinasabi mo, tampered ang freedom of expression pag funded yes. by government. What can you pa say, Andrea? Possible. It's possible. Actually, we don't, like, we in the government, we don't actually get, kasi, for example, like, you are trying to say na, yes, may certain, like, agenda ang mga, like, government parties, right? But then again, gov this government, this institution naman, there are a lot of institutions that filters out this kind of arts. Like, it's not just the government in general. There are several kinds of institutions that, um, this cater, that cater this form of arts. At saka, it's a diverse of like interest so how can you say that the, how can you be so certain about like there should be like a bra um, there should be like a filtration when it comes to black propaganda wait lang ha, balik lang tayo dun sa issue it's regulation when you say regulation you have to define that what do you mean by regulation does regulation mean it's restrictive is it um do we become more efficient are we streamlining processes or are we streamlining the content you have to be um, very specific kung saan yung sinasabi nyo. Is it financial? Is it cultural? In what specific gain are we talking about? Okay. Para lang din sa kaalaman ng mga schoolmates kung ano nga ba yung pinag-uusapan natin regulasyon sa state-funded arts. Ang ibig kasi naming sabihin sa regulation na ito ay yung proseso. Hindi yung, uh, hindi yung art mismo. But yung kung paano 
kung paano mo gagawin yung isang proyekto or yung process ng paggawa mo ng proyektong yun, kung ano yung, kung ano yung regulations mo sa proseso na yun, hindi, sa, hindi regulations sa art itself. So, so if we're talking about the process, what would what would your model be for that? Ano? Like, how would you what what are you going to propose, ba? Um, like for example, uh, di ba mag-allocate ng funds, and then uh, uh mag for example, parang sa architecture, di ba una pinaplano mo na yon kung paano kung paano kung paano yung magiging structure ng art architecture uh -huh. na yon. It's yun yung sinasabi naming process. Yung, yung pagpaplano. Alright, so, we'll get our point, pero... So, what about, what about the other kinds of art that are not, that are not, that are, that are, inherently, that are inherently expressive? So, so you mentioned architecture, but it's not really that much expressive. So, so we're talking, so what we're trying to say is, what if about the, the other forms of art that are expressive that, that can relay a message? So, what would you do if, if there is a, if you were if you were funding an artist that that has op that that has, that has opinions against you, what would you do if if there were dissenters within your within your artists? What would you do? So actually, currently there are already allotted funded um allotted funds into the different form of art. So here, because uh, what we are trying to say is that there should already like um uh, allotted funds even before like the output is already made. So like. What, what is the guarantee? Let me. What we are trying to say here is that, like, the guarantee of like trying to stop or like to trying to cut the trying to to like restrict the form of art is not really that uh, possible because yeah, again, the fund is already made even before like the art itself is made. All right, I get it, but but I think you missed my question, which is, what would you guys do? What if what what would the government? What do you think the government would do if if they were funding an artist that that is making an art that is again. Descent into the government. Would you, would they stop funding it, or would they try to restrict the publication of it? But what should the government really do? I mean, it's their responsibility to promote the art of the Philippines. What real is what real. Like we wanted, like regardless how bad the history is, we have to pro we have to say that it is the history. So I mean, like how can you be so certain saying that the government is trying to tamper the art itself? Yeah. Okay, wait lang ah. Siguro mas palawigin natin kung ano yung pinag-usapan yung ayon. Na nabanggit yung kanina yung economic um, impact of funding uh, state-funded arts. Sige, punta tayo sa question na to. Sakaling magkaroon nga ng regulasyon sa mga state-funded arts, mas makakapag-generate nga ba ito ng employment opportunities? Mas malaki nga ba ang kikitain ng mga artists? Okay, so we believe that, so if, if, we, uh, so if we allow private companies, so, so in this case, we're going, to, we're going to be specific about private companies now. So, so if we were allow private companies to step in, to step in, to step in, to step in the art industry, we believe that it is going to create more jobs. And even if it, is, if it may create less jobs than if than if, we, if it were the government to provide How can it, you guarantee right? that so those private companies can really like give those artists the credit? Because there are some private companies that once they already have the ownership of the artist art, there is a big chance of exploitation. There is a big chance of uncertainties when it comes to the artist and to the essence of art itself. But I think it builds up the competition in the market. Kasi yung, I think it builds up the competition in the market. Kapag yung, kapag uh, yung guarantee na, yung guarantee ng private companies. If private companies will step up, and then it will build competition in the market. At the same time, we th uh, we also think that if there are some of the artworks that are uh, that are displayed in their private companies, uh, that are displayed in the infrastructures, then most likely, it will build. Uh, it will build this competition, and must magiging tough the market, but, and they will oh, wait. But also, we it, believe that that private companies can will, have more money in in their hands. So, so we believe that the private companies funding artists can but there is, is much more sustainable. Growth so we believe that private it's much companies, better. What? Right? And like, if magkakaroon ng private companies, magkakaroon sila ng ownership. Exploitation will be uh, implemented. Exploitation Naturally. will be also, much that's more why possible. You're missing the point, all right? So we have we, we have another example of all right. Sorry. So we have we have we, we have already provided another example, which is the NGOs. So of course, it's not just a private from private companies. We are providing we're providing options, all right? So of course, we are we are right now. 
focusing on private companies, but we are also giving them another opportunity, which is the NGOs, which are not profit-driven, which is not driven but, by a specific agenda. But this so, will mean that art will be only ex exclusive to the higher, closet, higher classes. It will only be exclusive to those who can again, afford it. Again, that's where the NGOs come in. NGOs are not driven by profit, and so that can that can allow more access All right, to, to okay, the art. Okay. Matthew, just, Matthew, Bernice, ilatag natin, lagyan natin ang angkay, pinag-uusapan natin. Kasi tama, nagiging available daw sa higher classes na lang pag uh, na-commercialize. But I wanna know, bilang art, artist, kayo, ilagay niyo yung position niyo bilang mga artist, ano bang gusto niyo mangyari? Kumita kayo? O mangyari yung purpose na gusto niyo maparating dun sa art niyo? I think it's possible to have both because because if we have more money to to for to we to, to, because if we have more money, we can we can make better art or we can make better art that can express the Filipino culture better. So I think it's possible to have both and not just one or the other. Actually, for the artist value, dalawa lang naman yan. It's about para sa sining and para sa bayan. And the, the economically, uh, economic value comes next naman. It's not a pri bilang isang artist. It's not your priority to gain, um, like, to gain like so much for that, diba? Because at the end of the day, Allah, like, in the st like in the status quo right now, they see art as like less of a job. Right, less of a professional job. So, like as an artist, what do you really want to do? What are you creating your art for? Because for me, like as an artist, I believe that what I do. I think do, you're missing my point. Now that's why, naman, kasi mababa yung art, mababa yung numbers ng artists dito sa Pilipinas. Kasi we're not giving them. A, Maybe uh, it's a about the competition, that, right? Maybe it's about the, the artist is not competitive enough to create like a, an internationally. Uh, uh, but maybe there are other things that they are not. Uh, exactly. They that's are not why the exactly government support. should be responsible but for no, this I one. The private company should be supported. That's why there, be, there will be an essence to their art. Because why do you have to give other people the responsibility the government should take in the first place? Because we see like this art is a national issue that should take the go that the government should take responsibility for. So why would you give it to the private companies that would only take up take them um um? Take we are not. We are. We are. We are exactly trying to. We are not saying that we will pass them to the. Private companies so and what are you saying in the long run. But what we are trying to propose here is that when there is an econo uh, when Philippines is economically stable, then we will have. So when is that? The question is when should we fund? There will be a sustainable life for the people, and if there are uh, there are people who are not below. That so are you saying life. that we should not prioritize art for the moment just because we're suffering in economically? Because that's problematic. Because we see here, art is also a necessity here in the Philippines. Art is an essential. Let's not degrade the concept of art here. Because what we are trying to say here is art is as important as other welfares of the government. We are not art saying, is as important we are not as saying we are going to prioritize art just for a no. Okay. We so are not that's saying what, that's, what are, that's what we are going to do. We are, we, are, we are still doing this for art. So right now, we are, we are going to cut funding for art right now so we can, so we can increase the funding later. So we so want we to can, abolish so we, art for the moment and then like when it's time when it's stable. So it's just also the same as saying that art is not important for now. According to other sources, they are proposing a streamlined process or for one agency lang, which is Department of Culture. So lahat ng any, um, anything involving culture and the arts in the Philippines, wala nang sangay-sangay pa, di ba? In NCCA ay marami pang mga agencies na nagaganap. Pero para mas mapabilis daw ang proseso, magkakaroon daw ng Department of Culture. Pero I think uh, masasagot yan later ng ating mga schoolmates dahil napakarami magagandang punto ang bring up nila ngayon. At ngayon naman, sa so pagbabalik natin ay malalaman naman natin ano-ano nga ba ang tanong ng mga audience sa ating mga schoolmates. Sa so pagbabalik yan na Schoolmates, naging malawak at maganda ang talakay natin ngayong gabi. Pero para mas painitin pa ang ating debate, syempre hindi magpapatalo ang audience schoolmates natin dito sa Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts Senior High School. I'm sure marami rin silang masasabi sa nangyaring debate. Kaya kasama ko dito si Fendi, si Dave, at si... Si Shin. Hi, Shin, brother. Okay, so Fendi, para kanino ang iyong katanungan? 
yung katanungan ko po ay para po sa affirmative at sa opposition side. So, eto po, sa mga usaping kagaya nito, bilang mga mag-aaral ng sining at tagapagtaguyod din ng sining, sapat nga ba ang atensyon, tulong at suporta na natatanggap ng mga institusyon at alagad ng sining mula sa gobyerno? In the status ko right now, we see na it's not really enough, right? We can see na yes, they are really um, helping and like promoting the arts. However, it's not enough. But then we can see the effort that's given to us by the government, but also like as mentioned earlier, by creating the national um, cultural uh, national cultural process, right? So, sa tingin namin hindi, kasi una sa lahat, if you could if you could look at what is happening today, mas pinaprioritize yung mga yung mga science related strands, yung mga mathematics, yung or yung, or yung mga academic yung mga academic programs or yung or yung mga other programs ng government sa uh, sa ating society ngayon. So, um so like war on drugs and or the campaign against drugs and such. So, we do believe na um even though na nag-exert pa rin ng effort yung mga government agencies like NC, NCCA like yung mga art related agencies um about about sa larangan ito, feel pa, uh, hindi pa rin namin mararamdaman na sapat na ito para sa amin kasi hindi uh, kasi mas naka, mas naka-focus pa sila sa ibang mga programs ng government. Yun lang. Well, according to what you said, the only thing that we can say is that that's why there is state-funded arts. It is it is there existing to fund the arts even though it wasn't enough. It is there to promote the arts. It it's intellectual and cultural properties towards our country and it won't and even though you say that it, it, those um, funds or like those supports weren't enough. As an artist, it won't really let you down because it's a, a human need of self-expression. And as an artist, we all need that. But come, but come to think of it, the government, um, yes, the government will take care of the, will take care of the uh, of the intellectual rights of of all of the benefits that the artist needs, like like what you've mentioned earlier. However, it could create a tool for its um, for to boost their, to promote their own agenda. That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, debaters. Uh, tutungo naman tayo sa susunod nating tanong. Dave, ano ang iyong question? Ayan, so for the government side, bukod sa pagpopondo, sa paanong paraan or in what specific projects or programs ang pwedeng gawin ng ating gobyerno para makatulong sa pagpapayabong ng sining sa ating bansa? Art workshops and um, mas ma... Tingin namin, uh, since nasa media arts tayo, mas mabuti rin na uh, uh, mag-establish ng schools uh, for media arts and for uh, arts and design. And, um, uh, and um, yung, yung needs natin sa school na to, just like uh, cameras, drones, and other uh, gears na kailangan natin. Also, with that kasi, uh, by saying na what else do we need because currently um it's not just the government but also like local universities or like a state university that is offering art programs nowadays so it's another way of promoting art itself in the form of education okay salamat debater salamat dave syempre last but not the least kasama natin dito si sheen sheen ano ang iyong tanong uh, yung tanong ko po i-address ko po para sa opposition side uh, kung yung opposition side naniniwala sila sa power ng private companies and sa mga big corporations na sila lang yung pwede makapag-save uh, ng art sa society natin ngayon, uh, pwede po ba kayo magbigay ng example sa mga art na na-save ng big companies and mga, pri mga private companies in recent years? So, so I can provide examples, say, from private universities. One example is... Ateneo Art Gallery, the Ayala Museum, and and there is this part of the of the library of the, the University of Santo Tomas that is act that actively that actively like re, uh, that actively restores or maintains old books like the original copy of the Jose, Jose Rizal's No Limit Angres. So so we believe that in a way the the private sector has a contribution in maintaining, in saving, and also yeah maintaining, saving, and restoring the arts of the past. So. Yeah, thank you. Ayan, maraming salamat guys. Salamat sa mga nagtanong dito sa ating audience schoolmates. At sa aming pagbabalik, ilang argumento pa at ang ating maririnig. Kaya stay with us dito lang sa Schoolmates! Nagbabalik tayo.
tayo sa schoolmates. Trisha, naging maganda yung tala kaya natin. Kaya naman, palakpakan natin. Congratulations sa ating mga debaters. Ang gagaling. And syempre, dahil marami tayo natutunan kanina, it's now time for them to wrap up their statements. Dahil bibigyan natin ang bawat grupo ng pagkakataon para isara ang kanilang argumento. Simulan natin sa government side. We in the government side believes that uh, we should regulate state-funded arts because we are regulating the process or the streamlined process of uh, funding arts, not reg not the art itself. We believe that it is the government's responsibility to uh, to, to fund art, and uh, it is much better because it the government is much more able to protect the artists' rights and and cultural cultural and intellectual property. Next, it also boosts economic growth through, through tourism. That's all, thank you. Okay, I think now naman, Sky, it's time for us to hear the, um, the opposition side. We in the opposition side uh, believes that we should not limit this arts. Hence, uh, it should be the private companies eh, the private companies and the NGOs, which we will, which will provide, which will provide, uh, an, which will provide for this artist, so for this kind of arts, because we think in the gover we think in the opposition side that it will not only be beneficial for the artist, but also to the state as well. Because if we will pass it to the private companies and NGOs, that will benefit the state because we uh we can think that it will be more it will create more programs that will be progressive and will be sustainable to the people. So if we will have a sustainable life for the people, if we will achieve that sustainable life for the people, that will also mean that we can uh that the, the state can take back uh the state can also fund this art so it will it will not be beneficial uh, it will not be like one who will benefit it the artist the state and own also our economic growth as a nation as well so with uh i and with all those reasons we are proud to oppose thank you Sky, Tresha, sigurado ako ang dami ring natutunan ng mga schoolmates natin dito. Kaya kasama ko dito, si Arky. Yun, Arky. So ano bang natutunan mo sa nangyaring talakay natin ngayong gabi? Marami po eh. Pero, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's start with the ano, affirmative side. No? So they clearly made their points and they solidified the detail of what they are trying to say. And very coherent naman yung thought. Uh, well, sa opposition, I get it na medyo nararattle sila on their, what they are trying to say. But nevertheless, they are all equally good and I have picked up something no man, kahit pa paano. So in terms, in terms of art, yes, it is possible that the government could invest on the arts. Why? Because it could further pl promote employment rate and elevate at some point. No, I mean, allowing the richness of our culture no, to furnish by exhibiting further implementations, institutions for the art development is very crucial. No? So ayun, uh, mabuhay ang sine. Oh, mabuhay ang sining, di ba? At Ayan. syempre, hindi magiging maganda ang ating debate ngayong gabi kung hindi tayo sa ating mga magagaling na debater. So please, palakpakan nyo yung mga sarili. Ayun, palakpakan nyo daw. Pero, Tresha, meron tayong mas palalakpakan. Palalakpakan? Palalakpakan. Pa -palakpakan. <laughs> palakpakan mamaya. Dahil meron tayong napiling best speaker. Ayan, si yes. Kaya Tresha, dahil sa kanyang pinakitang husay at galing sa pagdedebate at mga debate. So talaga namang nagpabilib sa atin ang ating best speaker. I see. Dun, sino ba? Dun, 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 sino guys? Dun, 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 dun. Sino, sino? Sino, sino? Sino? Okay. Ang ating best speaker ay nakabuha ng 96.6 average. Okay, ang ating best speaker ay si Andrea Cruz. Mari, Andrea Cruz. Congratulations, Andrea. At Parang syempre, hindi ka naman shocked. Makakatanggap siya ng isang t-shirt galing sa schoolmates. Congratulations. Yes. Ayun, congratulations. congratulations. And syempre, congratulations sa lahat ng ating mga debaters na at kayo ay magagaling. Congratulations. Syempre, at, patuloy tayong uh, bumoto sa ating mga accounts sa at schoolmates and at TTV. PH, para sa kung ano nga ba ang gusto nyo mangyari sa naging topic natin ngayong gabi. And of course, ano nga ba ang inyong pulso regarding this issue? <laughs> uh, magaling, maganda yung naging uh, debate natin. But uh, I just want to start by saying na ang lahat ng arts ay biased. They are all subjective. 
unang-una, subjective yan dahil yun yung pinili na mismo ng artist. Diba? So, nag, meron at merong bias yan regardless. Magkakaroon ng limitation yung artist dahil unang-una, marami ding limitation yan sa funding, meron limitation sa funding, may limitation sa oras, lahat yan na uh, nakaka-apekto doon sa gustong gawing proyekto ng isang artist. But, um, uh, hindi ko sinasabing malaki ang uh, possibility na ma malimitahan or ma-restrict yung artist, lalo na kung government funding. Kasi may mga rules din na sinusundan, not necessarily uh, para malimitan yung art. Kasi if I were the artist, I wouldn't look for the profit. Hindi ko titignan na kumita ako bilang isang artist. But rather, ano ba yung gusto kong mangyari dun sa art na gagawin ko? Gusto ko bang mas, mga, mas mag-isip ang mga makikita nun? Ano ba yung gusto kong epekto? And I think as an artist, everyone would agree mas mauna yon before the profit. And magkakaroon lang tayo ng proper compromise. I think kasi importante lahat ng funding yan. It may be coming from the government or private institutions. But still, how firm you are as an artist, kung paano mo paninindigan ang gusto mong sabihin, that's on you. Kung ayaw mong ituloy dahil sinasabi na ng, for example, that specific organization na fund or government na baguhin mo, eh di huwag mong ituloy. Because as an artist, it's your responsibility na iyong sining ay para sa bayan. Yun lamang. Yes, we totally agree, di ba? Uh, Siyempre, balik na tayo din dun sa issue natin kanina, yung pinag-uusapan natin off-screen na regulasyon ng state-funded arts. Let's consider this a challenge, not only to the government, the artists, and of course the people, na mas bigyan natin ng halaga ang sining. Kasi dito natin napapreserve ano ang kultura natin, ano ang identidad natin bilang Pilipino, ano nga ba ang isang Pilipino ngayon, lalo na na modern generation at iba't iba na ang medium of That's art. True. So, yes. wag natin tingnan mas mababa ang arts oh. or mas mababa ang arts sa science. Meron tayong ganun paninaw. So, lahat yan ay importante para sa ating lipunan. Yes, at syempre, artista ng bayan, lumalaban. lumalaban. <laughs> Trisha Sky, bago tayo magtapos, gusto lang nating pasalamatan ng buong Eugenio Lopez Jr. Center for Media Arts Senior High School. Woo! Yan, maraming Nauhusan salamat. Nauhusan ka na feeling yes, so, agon. <laughs> Maraming maraming salamat po. School, oh. yes, maraming, maraming At syempre sa mga debaters, sa ating faculty oh. staff, maraming maraming salamat po. Yes, and with that, sa bawat usapin, sa bawat issue, may boses ang kabataan. Sumali makinig at makisa dahil ang inyo nyo ay maglaga. Sabay-sabay natin isigaw sa buong mundo. Schoolmates, may makilap ka! Isigaw ang